Hello, it's Miss Heather, piano and voice teacher at Conservatory of the Ozarks. I am just making another study guide video for my hymnody comps and orals. So, I'm going to read from my study guide. Um, the answers that I have. So, first is um, the age of pietism and orthodoxy. The Age of Pietism was from 1675 to 1750. It was a reaction against dry scholasticism, cold formalism, and dead orthodoxy. Philip Spainer, from 1635 to 1735, gave this movement its direction in Pia Desideria. Ironically, he was the same pastor of the same church, St. Nicholas in Berlin, as Paul Gerhardt. It emphasized reviving a vital living and practical Christianity. Johannes Freilinghausen from 1670 to 1793 um, wrote the Gestrichus Gesangbuch with 1600 hymns and 600 tunes. Um, Count Ludwig von Zinzendorf from 1770 to 1760 was the um, founder of the Moravian Brethren and he composed over 2,000 hymns. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, and Jesus, lead thou on, are two examples of Zinzendorf's hymns. Joachim Neander, 1650 to 1680, wrote Praise to the Lord in this era. And um, Erdmann Neumeister, 1671 to 1756, Jesus, sinners doth receive. Um, Benjamin Schmolk, 1672 to 1737, Dear Jesus, we are here. There was a deterioration of the tunes during this era of hymnody, and the role of the organ became more established during congregational singing during this era. And Johann Sebastian Bach, who lived from 1685 to 1750, had a big role in shaping the hymnody of this era. Johann Freilinghausen was barely six years old at Paul Gerhardt's death in, seven, in 1676. Freilinghausen's hymnody, however, marked the end of the era which Gerhardt seemed to dominate. It was an era shaped by the tension between two parties in Lutheranism, Pietism and Orthodoxy. These two movements are often associated with different styles of worship and hymnody. Orthodoxy centers on the word and sacraments in worship, pietism on private house devotions, and inner piety. Freilinghausen's life was buffeted by the hostilities between the Orthodox and the Pietists. He was introduced to Pietist writings through his college roommate, he transferred to a different university to study under pietist leaders. His parents were upset by his conversion to pietism. His name was included in a list nailed up on the local gallows naming him as a pietist student who was to be excluded from local pulpits. During his career, Freilinghausen had sermons and theological articles published along with two theological textbooks all of which reflected the spirit of pietism. Freilinghausen's legacy was his 44 hymns and the hymnal publication Gestrichis Gesangbuch, spiritually rich hymnal, a combination of two separately published collections, which included over 1,500 hymns. The combined edition, known as Freilinghausen's Hymnal, was published posthumously in 1741 and used for over a century. The new type of hymn which pietists preferred was different in spirit from the old hymns of the Lutheran tradition. Freilinghausen's hymnal was accused of being pompous, superficial, and almost licentious in the manner of sec secular songs. He was accused of allowing many hopping, jumping, and dactylic songs in his new book. There was a tension between elaborate polyphonic choral settings and simpler music capable of being sung by the congregation. 
In the 1600s, Gerhardt brought a more heartfelt tone to hymnody. In following years, hymns embraced more emotional depth. These hymns were often written to be sung in the home with keyboard accompaniment. This led to elaborate vocal ornamentation and elaborate realization of the figured bass. This led to a tension between soloistic styles of private hymn singing and ornamented style, and the style suited for congregational worship. Frelinghausen's influential hymn Knoll eroded the distinction between private devotion and congregational song. And that's the first question on the study guide.